Welcome to the Apostolate's Peace of Heart Forum Classic Series, where hundreds of key personalities in the church share insights and wisdom from classic spiritual literature. These experts are interviewed by the Apostolate's founder from a unique family perspective so that the spiritual insights shared can be applied to our everyday lives and give us peace of heart. Let's now join the discussion. Hello, I'm Jerry Conacher. I just want to welcome you to this new series that we're doing on the Secret of Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. We have with us today Father Hugh Gillespie to guide us through our meditations and Father Bernard Geiger, OFM Conventional Franciscan. Father, can we open with a prayer, please? Yes, we can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we ask God for the grace to truly understand and grow in the spiritual life. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your intercession, or sought your help was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come. Before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we're starting off with the introduction, but this, this uh, was written before True Devotion to Mary, or...? That seems to be our best guess. Mm -hmm. Dating these works of Louis de Montfort is a little tricky because we don't have exact information as to when they were finally written or published. Mm -hmm. It's probably best to think that The Secret of Mary and The True Devotion were written roughly around the same time, mm -hmm. probably with this one being a little bit earlier. Okay. And the genre of the two works is different. Mm -hmm. This one is written as a letter. Now, whether it was written to somebody specifically um, you know, as a personal mm -hmm. letter, yes. is not entirely clear. There's a tradition that says it was. It was mm -hmm. addressed to a religious sister. Okay. But since Montfort himself doesn't include that information in the work, it's hard to say that mm -hmm. as a definite and solid fact. Okay. But clearly, clearly, one of the differences between this work and the true devotion is an intimacy in the address. Mm -hmm. Montfort is writing this as an address to the individual the chosen soul or the predestinate soul, he says, as he begins. And he's conscious of his reader in a way that he's not in the true devotion. And so this work is very much a direct appeal to the heart of the single reader who actually has the work in his or her hand. I see. Okay. So how is, how, what are the conditions for this? Well, this is a, this is a curious way to begin a work of the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Monfort says, I'm going to let you in on a, a secret that the Lord has revealed to me, but I'm only going to do it under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. And so right <clears throat> away, one stops and says, what's going on here? But this is because Montfort is conscious of the importance of what it is he has to say, mm -hmm. and he doesn't want this taken lightly. So one of the things right away that he is assuming is that one, his reader is picking this up because there is a genuine interest mm -hmm. in knowing about the Virgin Mary and a genuine interest in really deepening one's faith life in Christ. Okay. So right away, Montfort's saying, if that's <clears throat> not what you're about, put the book down right now, mm -hmm. and it's okay. I'm not addressing myself to the merely curious. Mm -hmm. I'm addressing myself to that person who seriously wants to, go wants to grow. Okay. So now, again, stepping back, this doesn't mean that we can't pick up the book and read it to learn, mm -hmm. but that there is an aspect of what Montfort has to say, which is only going to be directly and really accessible to those who are taking their faith life seriously. And so he says, first, I'm going to share this secret with you under the condition that you are very careful with whom you share this secret. Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't tell it to just anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, now, if we think again about what the word secret means, Montfort loves this title, the secret of the rosary, the secret of Mary. But even in the modern world, we use the word secret a lot. Restaurants will talk about the secret ingredients yeah, in right. their recipe. Or when somebody is very skillful at doing something, we say he has a secret mm -hmm. for making it work. And when we want to learn, <coughs> let me in on the secret. Yeah, 
Well, this is what Montfort is talking about. He has a secret. He has a way of relating to the Lord and that connects to Mary. Mm -hmm. um, but Montfort is also saying he didn't discover it himself. God himself revealed this secret. Mm -hmm. And a secret is a thing that is only <laughs> disclosed between intimates. And so Montfort is first claiming an intimacy with the Lord, mm -hmm. that the Lord let me in on this secret. secret. And then he's saying, and I'm now letting you mm -hmm. in on what God showed me. And so for Montfort, this is important. Mm -hmm. He's opening up his faith life to another person. And so he's saying, you need to be just as careful okay. with whom you share this because it doesn't do to share this with somebody who doesn't, uh, isn't going to understand or will not appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And so the first is that we take seriously what we're doing and we recognize the intimacy mm -hmm. that's involved in this. Secondly, Montfort says, I'm telling you this under the condition that you actually use it. Mm -hmm. Now again, these are very strong words. He's like, if you're <coughs> just curious, I'm wasting my time, Montfort is saying. Because this secret is a way of growing more deeply into union with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you know this and don't put it into practice, you're basically like that man from the parable of the talents who took the Lord's treasure and buried it mm -hmm. and didn't put it into use. Yes. And you do no good. You'd have been better off not, just as the man in the parable would have been better off not having the talents in the first mm -hmm. place, so too you would be better off not knowing my secret because if you don't put it into use, you're being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So care with whom we disclose it, responsibility to actually use it, and then Monfort says, and third, you have to truly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting. Number three on page 467, that you thank God all the days of your life mm -hmm. for the grace he has given you to know a secret you do not deserve to know. So for Montfort, this is not just about the utility, mm -hmm. if we could dare use that word, about growing spiritually. This is also about recognizing that we truly receive a gift from the hand of Almighty God, and we need to thank Him. And right away at the very beginning, Montfort is saying, true knowledge of Mary and the secret of really understanding Mary's place in the spiritual life is a gift. And we can't receive a gift, really, unless we're thankful yes. and unless we really appreciate it. And there's wisdom in this. Oftentimes in life, we do receive many things. Mm -hmm. And we receive them, and we set, a, set them aside, yes. and we go on with our business. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, we never truly receive them. It's when I stop and appreciate the gift mm -hmm. and appreciate the giver yes. that I really, in a sense, receive the gift. Mm -hmm. And so Montfort is also saying, before we go any further, you need to take the time to appreciate and understand what it is that I'm giving you. And this notion of gratitude for this grace runs through all of Montfort's works, and it's one of the undeveloped aspects of his theology in terms of what we do to explain Lewis to Montfort, uh, to the laity, or even among ourselves. But Montfort always insists <coughs> that true spiritual <coughs> knowledge is a gift for which we must be thankful. And the more thankful we are, the more real that grace becomes within us. I think there we have, there's a book on appreciation. And um, when you thank people, a whole new dimension ha ha hits you. It's just, uh, you, you thank God and you're into a positive mode already. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this would be the same here. And al along with appreciation, appreciation <coughs> basically is something in the mind. Mm -hmm. But then the heart has to respond with love. And if you don't have the appreciation, you can't really love someone you don't appreciate. Mm -hmm. Or you can't really uh, love this gift mm -hmm. if you don't appreciate it. And if you love it, you're going to make use of it. If you don't love it, you'll mm -hmm. toss it aside. You'll let it be lost. Mm -hmm. And so that appreciation will lead to love, and love will lead to using it mm -hmm. for the purpose for which it was given. Mm -hmm. And that is why the appreciation is so important. But it is a gift, as you're saying. That's a great gift of the Holy Spirit. It goes along with the, with the infused virtues. 
uh, appreciation is part of that 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 gift of um, fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, uh, not fear of the Lord so much, but um, uh, I can't think of the name of it. But at any rate, the um, the the appreciation that you have for something is a real gift of God as part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This note of gratitude and appreciation and of really taking seriously what we're being given mm -hmm. is, is made a little deeper as we turn the page into 468. And you know, it's often the case in the works of Louis de Montfort in the first few paragraphs, he really does say an awful lot and it's worth lingering on them. He goes on to say, this is important because as you use this devotion in the ordinary actions and ordinary course of your life, so right away he's saying, this is not something for outside of the ordinary events of your life. It's precisely something that needs to penetrate, mark, and assert itself mm -hmm. in the actual activity of your daily living. He says, you're going to find the value and the excellence of what I tell you, but you're not going to fully understand it at first. Again, for Montfort, this is a secret or a knowledge of Mary that has to become a lived knowledge a lived appropriation of the secret. And so there's a dimension of this that as we read it, we can appreciate and we can enjoy, but it's partial. And the full dimension of the secret only comes when we begin to bring it into our daily living, little by little. In other words, you need to experience it. Right. It's not just an intellectual idea. Yes. Right. And so at first, our comprehension will be partial. And over time, our comprehension becomes full. And again, because this is not simply a thing of the understanding of the mind, mm -hmm. but of the living of the heart. And so as we live into this, our knowledge or our understanding or our appreciation of this will only increase. Now, that's an important caution because Montfort is also insisting, what I have here is a spiritual way, not a magic trick. Mm -hmm. This isn't... This isn't the kind of thing where you do it once and all of a sudden you're better with the Lord. Yes. This is the kind of thing that I'm teaching you where you begin to change your life step by step and root it in your life. It's a way of life. Exactly. And as you grow into this way of life, and so it's not the thing of a month or a week mm -hmm. or even a year, but a steady pattern that the longer we're faithful with it, the more we grow with it step by step, the better we'll be. And he's also saying then, don't have the pretension. He keeps coming back to this in all of his works. Don't have the pretension that you're going to fully master it right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Just like he himself had to grow into a fully mature relationship with Our Lady and Our Lord, Montfort is saying, I'll show you the way, mm -hmm. but then you've got to walk the way. You don't take the first step and get to the end mm -hmm. immediately. You take the first step for the sake of the second, third, and right. fourth. So he's laying out the roadmap but then he's saying, you have to take the trip. Mm -hmm. um, it, it keeps coming back to that idea of developing a real personal relationship, not only with Jesus, but with Mary. Right. And with Jesus through Mary and the Holy Family. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons, he says, that we need time to come to a full understanding is because of our many and grievous sins and our secret Note he uses this word again now, <laughs> our secret attachment to ourselves. So he uses secret in two very different ways here. Yes. One is a secret that is being disclosed to us mm -hmm. from God, a secret which gives us information. The second secret is the secret we have to now learn about ourselves, yes. that we have this secret pride and this secret self-love mm -hmm. that we don't show to anybody else mm -hmm. and that is often hidden from ourselves. And so the secret of Mary helps us to uncover mm. this other more negative secret within us so that we can set it aside. And that's one of the obstacles. We have these hidden corners of our heart that we don't even know about sometimes mm -hmm. that are going to get in the way. And as we begin living this secret of Mary, mm -hmm. these obscure parts of ourselves, these obscure fountains of sinfulness or selfishness, are going to become clear to us so that we can set them aside 
and more fully live this. Mm -hmm. In a sense, Moffat's <clears throat> going to say, you don't know these parts of your life are there until you trip over them, mm -hmm. when you try and live this secret. But once you trip over them, you'll know they're there, and you can begin to deal with them. So curiously then, we are, a secret is revealed to us from the Lord, which will open up for us the secret of ourselves. And that's, and that's really becoming aware. Um, the philosophers tell us that the soul has three capacities or three faculties, consciousness, intellect, will. Some say not consciousness, but they say memory, intellect, and will. That was the medieval philosophers. But anyway, these three faculties of the soul. Mm -hmm. But the first one is that consciousness. And it's a gift, it, it's a faculty, it's, it's part of the soul that we can be aware of ourselves, we can be aware of others. But it's a faculty that needs to be developed. Mm -hmm. And it is a grace, as you're saying, sometimes you don't become aware of something until you trip over it. Yeah. And, um, and we need to trip over some of these things. <laughs> And sometimes the Lord allows us to trip over them. Like you said, St. Francis would pray, who am I? Who, who are, are you, you, Lord, and who, who am, am I? Who am I is what he was because saying. Because he wasn't well, really, re he be was becoming aware that he didn't really know who he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, send, we tend to think, well, of course I know who I am. But when you come down to it, you really don't because you find yourself surprised at times at how you're reacting to things. And you wonder, why did I react that way? That's part of the faculty of consciousness and it's a faculty that needs to be constantly developed so that every day I become more and more aware of everything God wants me to be a, be aware of and so de Montfort is saying yeah you need to become aware of these things in yourself but also everything God wants you to be aware of. So then in part two Montfort doesn't want us to kind of have this vague disposition of, of gratitude or potential gratitude here. Now he wants, and again, this is something Montfort does frequently from time to time, get down on your knees right now, he says, <laughs> and pray to the Holy Spirit and pray to Mary before you read any further. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good thing we did begin our session today with mm -hmm. a prayer. Because Montfort mm -hmm. is saying, precisely because it's a grace, open your heart to God and do it right now. Mm -hmm. This is not, for Montfort, an intellectual exercise. And he wasn't writing just what was just a catechism. Mm -hmm. um, Montfort was conscious of what he was saying, being in his own way. He would pray frequently when he was writing for the unction of the Spirit to guide his pen. Mm -hmm. For the Lord, in a sense, to inspire his works. Yes. Um, and what he wants to do is produce that same inspiration in his reader. Mm -hmm. and, and so again, this for Montfort <coughs> is spiritual writing and spiritual reading. Mm -hmm. And because it's truly spiritual reading in that full sense of the term, he says, let's make sure we do it in a truly spiritual context where we, and very much in the spirit of Colby, who, was, who lived much later than Louis de Montfort, yes. pray to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and pray to Mary. Yes. And that, that the two of them might work together to illumine us as we move forward into the heart and the body of this work. Mm -hmm. So having done that, um, Montfort then says, look, you're busy, I'm busy too. And our time for reading and our time for writing is limited. Yes. So I'm going to move ahead and be as brief as I possibly can, and yet he's still going to be very, very thorough here. Mm -hmm. One of the differences between this work and the true devotion, quite obviously, is length. Mm -hmm. Secret of Mary is a much shorter work. Um, it's also not, but it's not simply a condensation of the true devotion. The secret of Mary is not an abridgment of a fuller teaching. The secret of Mary is a teaching that stands by itself. Okay. Um, it's the same teaching at its heart that we find in the true devotion. But what we don't have in the secret of Mary are these long, expansive discourses about the role of Mary in salvation history. Mm -hmm. We don't have a number of more fully developed theological themes in the secret of Mary. But what we do have 
is a relentless focus by the eye and the heart of Monfort on the very heart of his spirituality, on the very core of what he is going to say is the necessity of Mary for the spiritual life. Would and you say that this is kind of a boiled down version of his teaching? I would say no. Hmm? I would say it's, it's not a boiled down version of his teaching, it's a focused version of his teaching where what he's doing is, in a sense, he's knocking the arrow in the quiver and he's aiming straight at the heart. Mm -hmm. And so what he's not doing is giving us the abridged version. He's saying, what I want to do is I want to strike you right in the heart with the importance of Mary. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I'm going to choose and all I'm going to speak about and I'm not going to get away from it. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's not like it's simply a synthesis this notion that he's addressing it personally to us, to mm -hmm. each one of us, he's saying to you, this is what I have to say. Okay. Um, the temptation is to call this an abridgment of the true devotion, mm -hmm. but that misses the point that this work is of a different kind. Mm -hmm. it's, it's targeted directly toward us and he wants us to respond immediately as we're reading it. Mm -hmm. so he's talking basically to the heart more than to the mind. Exactly. True devotion is giving us a framework where we have a broader understanding. And while he, while he takes in the true devotion several movements where he's speaking directly to his reader, it's in a different way. This is really a writing that's seeking to provoke a response mm -hmm. and an immediate response from the part of the reader. Um, and so in that sense, obviously, if you want to talk about the theological core here, well, yes, it's, it's something of a distillation or a focused version. But it's not merely that. It's, it's taking that kernel that he's going to expand in true devotion um, and not just simplifying it so the mind can wrap itself around it more easily, <coughs> but so that he can make a more effective <laughs> weapon okay. to touch the heart. Um, so, and so in fact, of all the things that Monfort has written, among the most beautiful single paragraphs in all of Monfort is number three in The Secret of Mary. Mm -hmm. And this is a stunningly beautiful and very, very powerful bit of writing. Mm -hmm. And here's where Monfort launches now right into The Secret. And he begins in very sharp words. Faithful soul, living image of God, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Note who you are, he begins with that. Mm -hmm. You know, Monfort never gets away from true self-knowledge as coming from and being rooted in God. Who you truly are is redeemed by Jesus. Your sure vocation is the acquisition of the holiness of God. Point. Mm -hmm. So this is his fundamental starting point. Our sure and certain vocation because the fact that we have been redeemed by the Lord and sharing his life by baptism is nothing less than holiness. This is almost 300 years before the Second Vatican Council articulates its universal call to holiness. Mm -hmm. And could you tell church. us, a lot of people think they know what holiness is, but they're not, re they don't really. Right. Um, and for Monfort, for Monfort, it's a vocation. Everything we must do must be ordered to the end of that growth in holiness. And this is what everything in the book is now going to be. He strikes the heart directly. Mm -hmm. Did you realize that your mission in life is to be holy? This is what I'm going to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, this... holiness says I'm, I recall how the, the seraphim are constantly saying, holy, holy, holy. And I've heard it said or read it somewhere, I forgot where, that holiness, and especially when we apply that to God, holiness means something totally other than what we are ordinarily familiar with. In other words, God, we're created in His image, and so we're, we're like Him in many ways. But when you get right down to it, He's totally different and other than from what we are. In other words, He's being itself. And that's a concept that goes right over our heads. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be being itself? You and I have being. We aren't being. We have it. It's been given to us by creation. But God 
didn't receive it from anybody. He is being. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about holiness, that he's totally different from anything we have really experienced. But what blows our minds away is that we're called to become part of that. That's he wants right. to share that being with us, which he is. That's right, Father. We run out of time, but that's a very good theme to land this uh, overall presentation on the introduction to Secret to Mary. So, again, go to our website, find these talks, download them, share them with your neighbors. Thank you.